Hello, it's September, it's raining outside, and today I'm going to be making some dungarees. The reason I want to make dungarees is my sister had a really nice pair she was wearing this summer during our family holiday in France. Um, so I took her pair and traced it and made a pattern, dungarees pattern, and, and then I made a prototype from that, which I really liked, so I can actually wear it, which I'm really happy about. And now I'm going to be making a second pair for my sister's birthday. I did love the fit of my sister's pair, like that nice V at the back, but I wanted to make a few adjustments. Making it longer, because we're both quite tall, making it stronger, as some of the seams in our pair were beginning to come undone, and using a dark denim, because my sister has a small child and white was a bit risky. Here you can see all my pattern pieces, and these are all the seams I will be using to sew them together. As you can see, it's quite an easy pattern that you could self-trace from pants by just extending past the waistband to create the dungarees shape. I started by overlocking both the straps and the back pieces and then I sewed them together. Then I folded the sides twice and did the double top stitching. Since denim is quite thick, I found it very useful to use a hammer whenever there was a bulky bit. Unfortunately, I didn't have a double needle, which makes top stitching for jeans very easy, but I used a combination of an edge foot and a zipper foot to get straight lines. Morning! It's the next day and it's really nice and sunny today. I'm gonna attach the back pieces together using a flat felt seam, which is the seam that you find most often in jeans and it's really sturdy and it doesn't have any raw edges, so all the edges are enclosed. I started by trimming down the seam allowance of one of the back pieces by one centimeter, then I folded the longer seam allowance over it and I stitched near that gap. Then I folded the edge over to one side and top stitched twice. You can see that all the edges are enclosed on the inside and the outside and the seam looks very clean. Then it was time to join the two front pieces together using the same technique and then to create the button band which will reinforce the top of my dungarees where the button holes will sit. After overlocking all the edges of the button band, I decided to add some embroidery to make this gift extra special. So I picked a light blue thread to embroider my sister's nickname. Once I was done, I sewed the button band to the front piece right sides together, turned it out and top stitched the top, folded the bottom and top stitched it. I went for straight edges because as you can see here, I had really struggled to sew curved edges on the prototype. It was finally time to attach the front to the back at the crotch and I did that using another flat felt seam. Summer, come get it while it lasts. 
It was finally time to hem the dungarees. I kept them extra long because my sister is a bit taller than me. I didn't have any buttons to finish the dungarees that day, but I thought as we were leaving for Paris two days after, I would just pack the dungarees and find buttons and make the buttonholes in Paris. After a delicious lunch, Isabebo taught me how to make pelamushi, which is a traditional Georgian dessert that's extremely easy to make, as it only has two ingredients, grape juice and flour. Wow, Lamushi is also used to make chochrela, an amazing Georgian snack consisting of nuts threaded onto a string and then dipped in the pelamushi. So we tried to make a small one just for fun. The next day, we enjoyed our last Sunday in Betumi by going for a walk into town. We stopped by Givi's mom's hostel and Givi practiced reading French with this super sweet book that I recommend to all my students. We know that when we end up falling asleep. On sait qu'on finira par s'endormir, mais on se dit. Hello, so it's our last day in Batumi. We're going to Paris tomorrow. And today I'm gonna to try to sew a sweater to wear in the plane. So I've got this nice black sweater fabric um, and I really wanted a sweater for this autumn. Um, a black one that I can wear with um, other things so it's quite neutral. Um, I thought of taking the fabric and just sew it in Paris, but I don't have a lot of space in my suitcase and also I don't have a sweater to wear on the plane. So I'm gonna to try to make it today. I have a few 
ideas. I'm not really sure what I'm going to make. I'm going to experiment. Um, the only thing I'm sure about is I want it to be slightly cropped and also have quite big sleeves. I'll just cut the different pieces quite large so I can make any adjustments, make it smaller if I need to. And yeah, let's see. My fabric didn't have a lot of stretch to it and I didn't have any ripped knits. So I was trying to figure out how to do the collar and get my head through. I'm thinking if the neck is quite wide, I could get away with making it a bit higher so that it still hides whatever I'm wearing underneath because I don't really like it when you wear a sweater and then you can see like a white t-shirt. Also, I kind of wanted to have some slightly dropped shoulders, so I'm gonna not cut it right here, but like rather on the shoulder. I held the fabric against my body and traced some lines with chalk, which wasn't very easy to do on my own, to be honest. Then I went ahead and cut a front piece. It looked kind of good, so I folded it in half and replicated it to create a back piece. So now I've got my two identical pieces, one back and one front, and I'm gonna attach them to each other at the shoulder and at the sides to see how it feels and looks before I cut some sleeves and then see how it goes. So first try on, it's not too bad, I, I'm very happy I can get my head through, it's actually quite big so I'm gonna shorten it a bit. I just made a few small adjustments and then I ran the shoulder seam through the machine. So I'm gonna try and prep the sleeves, I'll just do one and then if that goes well I'll do the other. Um, I just folded my fabric in half. I then pinned and sewed the sleeve at the shoulder seam and then pinned and sewed the sides. It looked fine, so I went ahead and added the second sleeve. It was time to make the cuffs, so I measured my wrist, cut a rectangle, folded the rectangle in half, sewed, and then turned it right sides out. I gathered the sleeve with a basting stitch and then inserted the cuff right sides together before pinning and sewing. It all looked like a bit of a mess from the inside, but I loved discovering how nice it looked from the outside. To finish the neck, I used black bias binding to navigate the curves. And then to hem the sweater, I just overlocked the edges and folded once before sewing. I was really proud I managed to make it in one day and was actually super happy with how it turned out. In Paris, I went to a small haberdashery to get some buttons, but I forgot to bring my pieces with me, so I just picked two different types I thought could work. In the end, I went with the white ones, which I thought looked more neutral and chic and would work better with different outfits. I used my machine's buttonhole foot and it worked really well, but at first I had to play with the tension a bit after getting this mess. All day long the sky is blue, watching over the sea.
don't know why I couldn't resist doing this, but actually I wasn't done because I still had to add the buttons. Once I was done with my pair, I sewed the buttonholes on my sister's pair and I decided to make them horizontal actually because it helps the buttons stay in place nicely. I wrapped my sister's pair in a little package that my parents will give her when they go visit in Berlin just before her birthday and then it was time to go to the park to model my pair. Mm -hmm. 